URC ran 14, just kept delivering statement wins and shocks all weekend long. My name is Mark, let's talk rugby. It really was a great weekend of rugby. Even though I'm a Lancer fan, I still uh, pretty much enjoyed it because, you know, I want, I've said a lot, many, many times, I want to see this league be competitive, be the best league in the world. And it's, it's heading that way. I don't think it's there yet, but it certainly is putting, you know, uh, putting his best, best foot forward as of late, especially this season has been amazing. I'm wearing black. It's not an Osprey's jersey, but it was the closest I could get in honor of their heroics at the weekend as well. It's such an amazing, um, victory for them, but we'll come on to that a little bit later and um, we're going to go through as usual each of the games in turn and just talk a little bit about them and uh, probably spend too long talking about them but i love talking about rugby so so what uh okay so let's start with the first game of the weekend and that was ulster 19 Cardiff 17 pretty poor performance from ulster and they somehow come out as the winners, I think as a Cardiff fan, you'd, you'd be feeling like, how the hell did we lose that? There was a bit of controversy over like a few different con- pieces of controversy. One where I think it was Balakoon was, was going back, uh, try saving tackle, but you know, on replay shows that he actually pretty much kicked the ball out of the Cardiff players hands. Then the finish of the game as well. We come on to that, um, in, in a minute too. Um, so let's start first of all. Cardiff were on it right at the start. Um, we have a lovely move finished off by uh, Cabango, who you know looks a, a really good player. Um, nice evasive, um, you know, footwork and good pace as well to finish, and nice strength to make sure he gets down. Then you know, we have um, in the first half, Doak through penalties is keeping uh, Ulster in touch, and you know. Uh, Going into half half time, I think Ulster were actually um, just a point behind, right? I think it was seven six at half time, if I'm right. I hope I'm right. Um, then into the second half, uh, Cabango. If like the the first try he was finishing off a move, the second try he pretty much made himself. Uh, you know, he was it was a nice pass to get him out on the outside, but then a lovely cut back inside, and then just the pace um, to to you know back himself. And get over to score a really good finish from him and you know some really good play from Cardiff as well for most of the game as well that you know in, in terms of ball in hand they looked the most threatening of the of the two teams and they were finding space out out wide as well against that Ulster defense Ulster though again um you know clinging in there then they get McCann over for um a try and is converted by Cooney and Ulster uh, back in the game again. Then a Cooney penalty nudges Ulster. What was yeah nudged Ulster in, in front right. There were like a point or two in front that stage. But then a few minutes later, the beer pops one over for Cardiff, and you know now Ulster have to respond. Ulster they're in like last minute of the game. They're in the Cardiff twenty two, and they're um. They're trying to kind of force it a little bit. Cardiff turned the ball over, go to into the field and score a try, except they don't score a try. And this is where a little bit more controversy comes in here. It was a judge that there was a deliberate knock on. Um, it, you know, that basically led to the, to the turnover for Cardiff to break away. So Ulster get a penalty. Cooney slots that one over and then uh, Ulster see out the game, get the ball off the pitch to win and you know they, they've got to count themselves lucky I think uh, for that win we had like two yellow cards in the game as well Stockdale got a yellow card maybe a little bit harsh on him as well um, getting a yellow card in the first half for a deliberate knock on because he felt he was going with two hands for a for an intercept but you're all, you've always got that risk I think once you stick your hands out to try and inter- intercept the ball if you don't intercept it and you knock it on there's you know, a very good chance you're going to give away at least a penalty. Stockdale and Kerr both doing that. Um, you know, Kerr got a yellow card for for his part as well in the penalty that that gave Ulster the win. But I think yeah, the better the two teams was definitely Cardiff. But 
you know, you've got to think as well with a team like Ulster, got a new coach in there. They're trying to build some, you know, just trying to build something there, build a bit of confidence, etc. And wins um, breed confidence. Sometimes you can get lucky and get a win. And then that just gives you that little bit of confidence. And then your performance improves because of that. And then you get, you start getting results because of um, the more the performance than the luck side of things. So, you know, getting a bit luck is never a terrible thing um, in any, in any sport, especially rugby. Okay. So that was um, our Friday game. We also had another game on Friday at the same time, which is Glasgow 21, Sharks 10. So Glasgow uh, started really well in this one. They're close to, to the line and win a penalty. Horn um, goes quickly and, and he gets over. It looked like it was maybe stopped short, but then um, on the replay, we see that he does actually get over to or got to the line to score on the line. Um, then they get over as uh, Williamson. I think this that one, hopefully memory saved me right. I think that was just some close range. He goes over. Um, then... Sharks um, will response. Use uh, juice go, uh, gets over some lovely hands. Sharks showed some brilliant play um, in this one. You know to to keep themselves alive in the game. Really, some lovely hands and some just really good interplay from them. Um, and then in the second half, then uh, you know Glasgow looking for you know to, to kind of pull away a little bit more. And again. Uh, Horn with a quick tap from a penalty. This time the spread in in field uh, towards the post, and Stain is able to uh, get over under under those posts uh, to score. And you know that was basically the last score from Glasgow in the game. Um, it it turned out to be enough for them, uh, luckily, because Sharks did get another try through uh, Makunu, but you know it's. They, they couldn't do anything more than that, really. And, you know, 21-10 is how it finished. Glasgow doing really well at the minute. It's not a bonus point try, but, you know, uh, this win moved them up into, um, you know, second place right on Leinster's heels. Sharks, you know, um, they'll be disappointed to lose the game, but we can see now that the confidence is back there in terms of just their, their attack. And that, you know, they're going to pick up more points as well towards the end of the season. And, you know, they, they're definitely looking up the table rather than down at this stage, I think. Okay, on to then the Saturday game. So early game was Emer- Emirates Lions 44, Leinster 12. So Leinster, in fairness to them this year, they sent a stronger squad down to South Africa than they did for the tournament squad last year. Um but the first game last year, they won it. Uh, no such luck. This year, Lions win an amazing start. Like, when the first minute, um, some really great hands uh, cut Leinster open. They get Vandenberg over. Then I think it was uh, Nahamba with a nice break, and then he finds low to go over. And, you know, Horn over again. And, like, after, like, 14 minutes, they're 21 nil up. And... No, it was 19 nil, was it? Because I think maybe they, they missed one of the conversions. So, like, uh, Leinster really struggling. Actually, it was more than that because they got a penalty as well, right? So, I think it's 22 nil, but it was a big score to nil anyway. Um, and then, you know, you're expecting something to come from Leinster, really. Um, but get all the way to half time Leinster not producing anything into the second half then Leinster look like they're over to score um but it's chalked off for a forward pass in the build up then a few minutes later then they do get over um I think it was a kick through and Frawley uh wins the race there to dot it down and score and yeah you're thinking okay now let here comes the response from Leinster but no um, lines go again and a uh, couple of like first of all a try from uh, Chituka um, and then he gets a second one but but uh, before he gets that one Frawley's over for a second for Leinster which even at this stage you're thinking whether it's Leinster or not it, it feels like a consolation because they're not firing um, credit to the lines for that the lines really like um you know, harried them, oppressed them, um, 
and and made it so that Leinster really couldn't get get the defensive line set. Lions were, you know, offloading game was great. Um, the link up between backs and forwards as well, keeping that pressure on, moving the ball away from the point of contact and just finding gaps. And once they get in behind, support runners are brilliant. And, you know, there was just too many options for the ball carrier for Leinster to cover. And, you know, uh, some great tries. She took it, as I said, over for a second. And Horn gets over for his second right at the death. And, you know, really well-deserved win for the Lions. 44 points to 12. Um, You know, the Lions kind of almost a little bit the opposite of last season. Because last season, they did really well when they came up to Europe. And now it seems like, you know, they're hitting form at home instead. So they, they kind of need to just get a season where they can balance the two and maybe, you know, um, getting into the playoffs will be a little bit easier than the fighting at the minute. Um, but, you know, on form like this, if you keep this up, uh, they're definitely, you know, in with a shout for one of those eight places in the knockouts. Okay. So next then another team looking for that is Benetton, Benetton 36, Dragons 19. So, um, Benetton, some really good hands and, um, they get, uh, Rhino Smith over to score pretty early on for them. Then, um, you know, we, we have like, you know, a bit of a lull in the game, but then just before half time, sparks back into life. Lucchese gets over with 10 minutes to go, and then Erlen as well. And it looks like, you know, um, Benetton pretty much, you know, um, have, have the game secure. Into the second half, then we have, uh, strike back from the Dragons. I think Rosser, um, it was like a length of the field thing. Was it an intercept? I think we might have had like two intercepts. Um, one after the other. I think Rosser and then Ritave, maybe his one was an intercept as well. Um, but some, some nice finishes from, from both teams. Then Blacker, um, gets over as well for, um, for the Dragons. And, you know, it, already at this stage, you're thinking, okay, Benetton do have the game won, but maybe Dragons can get back for a losing bonus point. 10 minutes to go then, Yukazi is over and then Lamaro as well from close range. Um, and, and that's the game kind of sewn up for Benetton. But then we have another long range effort by Hope from the Dragons. And, you know, at least they got three tries in the game. And we're seeing a little bit more from the Dragons, you know, um, than we have maybe in kind of the middle rounds of the season. Still not really producing too many results, but, you know, it's at least a good sign for next year that there's a little bit there for the, for them to build on. But Benetton, um, doing really well. Like, you know, they haven't got that many bonus point wins this year. Um, but they've made, uh, absolute certain of this one. Okay. On to the next one then. Um, Bulls 22, Munster 27. So this was another big win. Um, in terms of like Munster, I think the first European team in the URC to go to Loftus. And win, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that that's right. Um, and you know, again, kind of a decent start for the, from them. Um, some, you know, good hands to get daily over in, in the corner. Um, and you know, it was, you know, uh, one of those ones where the, all of the passes had to go right, if you know what I mean. Um, in order for, for it to come off and they're able to perform under pressure. Then, um, we have the Bulls responding. First of all, Lowe gets over for a try and then Hooson, um, tacks on a penalty to that as well. But then, uh, Snayman, uh, gets over for Munster. It's good to see him playing for Munster because, you know, the, the guy, he's obviously a bit of a talisman, but he hasn't played that many minutes. Um, especially kind of starting games as well for months or so. Great to see him, him there and doing that. Um, then we have, um, Arantz, uh, I think he, I'm pretty sure he got, he got himself mixed up with the forwards. Like there was a few, um, you know, big forward carries out on the left and then he's there. Um, it was offload a couple of times and he's there to get the last offload and then he goes over to, f- to finish off. So not, not, you know, a sweeping backs move, but just in the right place at the right time. And that's really what you want 
a winger to be doing, you know, to, uh, to be sniffing out any chance of a try. And that's what he did there. Um, then we have uh, Graveler getting over as well as the Bulls, you know, uh, look like they, they're kind of pressing ahead now. Um, but then we have, you know, one of the big turning points of the game. Hooson converts, but then um, a few minutes later, he's very upright in a tackle. And, you know, as far as I can see, it's, it's nothing but red, you know. Uh, and I, I think, I'm sure people will argue and say that it's not red, but I think a lot of those people are being maybe a little bit one-eyed or disingenuous, you know, because if you, if you look at how the rules are now, that's a red. Uh, whether you, if you disagree with the, with the rules as they are and and you feel like you know it shouldn't the rules shouldn't be that that it's a red um that's different but if you're just looking at this is what you know the the, the laws say and um judging on that I, I think it's a definite red for for them um then Munster get themselves going. I thought Hodnett did really well um, in finishing his try, you know, a good burst and then some good strength as well to get over and finish. And then um, Murray turns the clock back then, um, you know, towards the end, a nice snipe by him and then um, some some good, um, you know, levers as well to to get get the ball um, down on the line as well after you've been tackled. So, um, you know, really good win from Munster there and it really did shake things up because I felt like the Bulls were like a big coming force and it would be you know um really difficult for Munster to actually go there and get get anything out of the game I don't think they might have got a losing bonus point in fairness but I didn't I honestly didn't think that they did get the win but you know this is pro- for me certainly in the URC and maybe the whole season probably Munster's best performance honestly um of of the season so far they haven't they haven't been like you know last year around this time of the year we saw that that new attacking system was really clicking um you know the, the midfield was just on fire and Munster were coming like a train they're not really doing that this year they're kind of clawing their way up but it's effective and you know this is the kind of rugby that wins knockout games as well. And, and it's kind of what they did in the knockouts last year too, is that, you know, they didn't blow anyone away really. Um, but they, they, they had that ability to come up with the vital scores at a vital time. And that's what they did in this game too. So I think that bodes well for them. Bulls, they're not done as a force now. And there's going to be, you know, still a big ding dong battle for those top places in um in the in the table at the end of the season on to the next game then it's stormers 21 ospreys 27 so again the black jersey on for the ospreys because this is an amazing result like you know i've i've been saying um basically since i've had this channel that i'd love to see a uh, a welch team really you know start to deliver in the urc i know they used to be like you know um what was it 20 was it 2015 or something um where like around that area our era where you know we had winners of whatever was was it called the celtic league or the pro 12 or wherever it was back then um but we, we were having welch winners and stuff like that um but that was when like wales as um a test side as well were at the pump um but it's a been, been a long time since we've seen anything like that so the Ospreys really have been a breath of fresh air this year. Cardiff have, have looked decent um, at times and, and there's lots of potential there, but the team really delivering this year are the Ospreys. So, you know, start of the game, um, we got Morgan gets over for um, Ospreys, you know, um, nice try there. Then Duplessis, um, he's involved twice and ends up finishing off um, the score, like some really good hands and interplay from the Stormers to get him over. Then um, Osprey's finished the half really well. You've got Parry going over kind of the middle of the half, but then Morgan just before half time gets over too. Um, and then into the second half, um, Roos is um gets over for the stormers and you're feeling like you know uh, it's a nice finish from him too um and he's he's someone that i really rate as well i know like the um 
the Stormers have tons, or sorry, not, not just the Stormers, South Africa have tons of amazing forward talent. But, you know, uh, this, this guy is someone that, that I really like and really rate. But, you know, when he goes over, you feel like, okay, this is it now. The Stormers are going to come back. Um, Ospreys are going to wilt a little bit. And, you know, that's just, just how the script is, right? Um, but Ospreys, and that's what it, I'm pretty sure last year, in this situation, that's exactly what would have happened to Ospreys because they didn't have the steel that this team has and the confidence as well. But Ospreys go again and they get over through through Deves. And then, you know, at the end of the game, um, you know, we have um, Walsh scores a penalty with a minute to go. And it looks like Ospreys, you know, they've already got a bonus point win, which is absolutely amazing um, down in South Africa. But it looks like they're going to deny the Stormers a, a losing bonus bonus point even. Um, but Stormers come forward and are pushing for that score that will get them the, um, the losing bonus point. And out wide, they've got, they've got numbers and you know the pass goes naggy knocks it on deliberately and we have a review and the review is well if you took his at him out of the game then a try probably would have been scored or likely would have been scored and therefore it's a penalty try for the stormers and that gets them their losing bonus point i thought their efforts on the night uh deserved it but certainly the ospreys uh deserved their their try uh bonus point win as well um they were amazing and i just hope that you know this isn't kind of a, a pinnacle where they kind of drift down from that you know i want to see them keep going i want to see them um making the playoffs but the problem i think the problem i have is that there's so many teams that i want to see make the playoffs but there's only eight spots and I'm pretty sure there's 11 teams going for it. And I want to see them all there. So there's, I'm going to be disappointed with some of the teams I'm cheering on, obviously. And some of those teams are going to be disappointed too, but it's going to be a wild ride to get there as well. On to the next game then. Um, Connacht 54, Zebra 16. So, um, you know, Connacht actually doing something a little, you know, not giving their, their fans heart attacks, um, this time, you know, um, fairly um you know um uh, fairly well managed you know first half was pretty close divine i thought um had a fantastic game for them you know um always ready to to, to snipe and to get over and he does that for a couple of tries um that sandwich like a, a decent move from Trulla. um i thought zebra you know, you know the hands um and the movement as well for their their scores um was was really nice as well and then uh Niall Murray, I still don't know why he pronounces his name that way. Um uh, but Niall Murray um gets over just before half time as well for Connacht. And then into the second half, then Connacht just kind of sealed the win. You know, Farrell um over, then O'Brien, and um, we do have another response from Zebra, but the game is pretty much gone at that point um from, from Lucan. And then Aki um I think he got himself involved in a mall or something. He ended up with the ball and then he gets pushed over by a couple of latches. Um, and then finally then Hanrahan over at the end. So a really nice win for Connacht. Um, you know, but there was the problem they had was pretty much everyone around them, um, that they were competing with pretty much had, had nice wins as well at, at the weekend. Next then we have Edinburgh 43, Scarlet's 18. So this is the last game of the um of the weekend so scarlet started this one really well like uh you know um some re two really well worked tries rogers and uh davis getting over for them and then um Houston getting a score for the for edinburgh in between but you know uh scarlet's really looking good like you know coslo with a penalty as well in that first half and and they've got a nice lead at half time. And in the second half, then uh, cut open a little bit easier. I felt uh, Van der Merwe just waltzing through a gap over to score. Um, then Healy bangs over a penalty because Costello replies from that. And then Edinburgh just take over. Like um, you know, we have Curry gone over, Schumann over from um, from close range. Then Bennett adds another score as 
become a bit of a blowout as the Scarlets a will thing. And then William Mata then um to at the end then he he goes over um to score as well. I trying to remember which was I think it was Bennett's try, right? Bennett um he was who was it from let me look at the lineups. I'm pretty I'm trying to remember who it was. Um was it Fafita. I think it might have been Fafita where um I think pretty sure this this is a breakaway, right? And it's kind of a foot race and Bennett tries to pass the ball inside and Fafita sticks a hand out and basically knocks it back into Bennett's hand and then he goes over to score anyway. Uh, it was just kind of a nice um, little cameo there. And then William Manna as well. He's been a great servant for Edinburgh. Like, um, you know, really, even when Edinburgh aren't playing well, like he's, um, you know, one of the best players on the field. Uh, so it's nice to see him get rewarded with a score there as well. But really good win for Edinburgh there. We're going to have a look at the table now. Um, so Leinster, um, no points for them for the first time in God knows how long, right? Um, still at the top, but only just um, after the third defeat of the season. So they have 54 points. Glasgow one point behind there now um, with 53. Munster climbing up to third after that win over the Bulls with 48. And the Bulls um, dropped down to fourth with uh, 46 points there. Then we just have like a... a you know, traffic jam of teams really after them. So Bennett on the fifth place with 42 points. Stormers now um, dropping down to sixth on 40 points. Ospreys climbing up to um, seventh after that win over the Stormers. Also on 40 points. So those two um, pretty much locked there. And then look at this. Eighth place, Edinburgh. 39 points. 9th place, Connacht, 39 points. 10th place, Ulster, 39 points. 11th place, Lions, 39 points. So look at those Look at those teams from 7th down to 11th. There's one point between them, right? And every single one of those teams won at the weekend. Ospreys beat the Stormers. Um, Edinburgh beat, I just talked, Scarlets, right? Connacht beating Zebra, Ulster, that very jammy win against Cardiff, and then the Lions, an amazing win against Leinster. And you think, like, bonus point win against Leinster, we're zooming up that table, we're going into the playoffs. But no, every other team pretty much competing against them for those, you know, last couple of spots um, wins instead, and they end up in 11th place. <laughs> you kind of, like... It's crazy, right? But it's so brilliant as well. It's you know, I'm loving the URC this year. Uh, you know, I love I love watching. You know, obviously cheering on the Irish provinces and stuff like that. And obviously, if if it wasn't as competitive as it is now, maybe Connacht and Ulster would be in there in the playoffs. But for me, um, I always say I'm a rugby fan first, and I want to see this league um, being hugely competitive and just being tons tons of excitement and every game actually mattering you know not i don't want to go into the end of the seasons where you got tons of dead rubbers where you know um welsh teams are playing each other um uh, with nothing riding on uh, at all like you know we're going into um uh, the end of the season now where we're gonna have those welsh derbies with ospreys involved where you know ospreys um there's huge huge um you know, prizes involved for them qualifying for the Champions Cup because, you know, last year, um, all the, like last year, they pretty much would have been qualified already for the Champions Cup because all they had to do was win the Welsh Shield, right? And looking at this, 40 points for them, next place, um, in the Welsh Shield is Cardiff with 25. Ospreys, you, you gotta say that they would have been qualified, right? But that's no longer the case. A shield winner no longer gets through it's simply the top eight unless um there's you know a winner from outside of the top eight of one of the um big european competitions um which obviously isn't gonna gonna happen um this year so basically top eight is where you qualify so there's huge you know um rewards kind of 
uh, riding on those for Ospreys, and that's great to see. We got like you know Edinburgh being hugely competitive. We got Benetton right up there in fifth place. That's great to see, and we got the Lions there as well. You know, trying to like bonus point again, bonus point win against Leinster, right? And they they still make no progress up the table. They got to think be thinking what have we got to do boys you know but if they keep up that form you know teams above them are going to slip up and they are going to move up um but you know that's amazing uh to see at this point of the season next time we have cardiff in a little bit of a no man's land there um probably should have beaten ulster and kind of got a bit more of a cushion on the sharks but they didn't and uh, they did get though a losing bonus point out of that at least so they pulled away a little bit sharks then in 13th um again i think they should be looking up towards cardiff rather than down towards the scarlets given their recent performances scarlets then in um 14th place you know uh, just one point above the dragons in 15th with 15 points and zebra uh propping at the table at the moment with 15 so it's going to be you know a, an interesting end to the season between those three as well to see who who finishes um, bottom of the table can zebra um, after having such a great start to the season a great middle as well can they produce an end to the season now that sees them you know not finish bottom for the first time in god knows how long right um but yeah i think it's been brilliant and i can't wait for for the next round of this competition because it's so exciting and you know I, I think at this this time last year certainly wasn't as exciting you were looking at you know you were looking at teams thinking okay well this team has to make up three or four points to make the playoffs or wherever you know it wasn't one of these where you're just like look at that like it's one point separating um sixth place down to 11th place <laughs> That's just crazy. Okay, but um, we will have more URC um, coming up uh, for the next round as well. We'll be doing previews. Um, I should be able to watch some of the games live because, you know, again, I always say I, I never want to um, cover a game in terms of, of a, a review of a full game unless I've watched the entire full game. And um, On weekends when I'm working, it, that can, can be very hard depending on the timings of the games, etc. But, um, you know, I've got a weekend off coming up, which means that I can watch plenty of, of rugby and I can do at least a, a couple of reviews, I think. Then we'll also have uh, tomorrow the uh, review of the women's six nations from the weekend i didn't get to do the preview um again work uh, being a little bit busy but um i definitely will make sure tomorrow to get the preview done but yeah look out for those and see you guys on the next one